Welcome to the Mr. Beacon podcast. We're in New York and we are at a very cool WeWork office with the folks from IDEON. And um, I'm talking to Michael. Michael, what's your role? I'm the Chief Operating Officer for IDEON. Tell us what they do. Ah, IDEON is a personal identification, security, and experience platform. So if I break that into pieces, um, it's all done through this device. Very cool. All right. Which is a skin applied um, personal identification device. So on this, we have radio, fre this particular one has radio frequency technology, but yes. we could use others in, in your case. Bluetooth, Bluetooth would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so on the personal identification side, we use this to identify an individual using a UID number and a specific non-replicatable number that we can apply to an individual. I mean, you know, most things about hospitals are just horrible, but I can imagine with kids, this is like, you know, what do you do when a kid has done something uh, to be praised? You give them a sticker, don't you? You give them a, a thing to stick on them. They're going to love this. Yeah, so there's broad application. Um, it, there's healthcare, as you mentioned. Um, and then there's also the second piece of this, which is more security related. So more like, and it works for kids too, uh, where you're in an environment where there are lots of people mm -hmm. and you want to be able to identify people and, and logistically move them around the way you want to. And it comes up with kids a lot because okay. you could think of camps and events and mm -hmm. you know school trips. And all these things are places where people need to be identified they, in, in a secure way and be able to recall that information quickly so you can get information in, in a case of just general logistics or even an emergency. But this kind of was born out of a medical context, wasn't it? Right. So in healthcare, um, we, we originally focused on replacing the hospital wristband. So the hospital wristband is, is universally disliked. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who have been in a healthcare setting, they can attest. Um, but even studies inside hospitals have shown that, that, generally speaking, people are very uncomfortable with them. From a healthcare perspective, they also interfere, interfere with uh, IV placement. Uh, they create irritation on the skin. Um, and they're a, a, a conduit for disease transmission. And I say that because uh, in a healthcare setting, when you go from person to person to identify them with a wristband, you need to grab it physically. Mm -hmm. And there are things in place for sanitary purposes to try to prevent, but just inherently you're going to have some transmission from person to person. And with our device, since it's non-contact, there'll be no reason for that individual to actually physically touch the person and, and, and hence you know, less opportunity to transfer something from patient to patient. So, I mean, we had a look at it. What, what is this and, and why does it stick on? Why doesn't it just come off? Yeah, so it's a hyperallergenic uh, material, uh, and it's all skin safe to be applied to the skin. So there's an adhesive, there's an electronical component, and then there's a, uh, a soft, flexible material that is applied to the surface of the skin to feel like skin, mm -hmm. be comfortable and discreet and, and easily forgotten that you have it on. Because if I was sticking like a bit of paper or plastic onto my skin, that would be the opposite of comfortable. But this has got some flex in it? Or yeah, or? so some elasticity, you know, similar to the skin will go a long way in comfort on the skin. Okay. So something stiff will feel stiff. Uh, something that uh, has friction on it, you'll feel the friction when you when you run past it. Right. But, it, you know, if we, you know, we could put that on you, you you'll see that it's uh, very quickly, you'll forget that it's there and it, it won't feel like much at all. And this particular version is, is that UHF? It's a UHF RFID? That's NFC. Oh, it's NFC. Okay. So you would tap it with your phone or, or, or? Yeah, so there's, there's two ways to look at it, right? There's the, if we take healthcare for example, there's the facility side and then there's the patient side. Mm -hmm. So for a patient, we want something that's secure, safe, comfortable, and then we can also deliver an experience like you described that's relevant to their stay. So uh, education for the patient, education for whatever they're there for, things they could take home with them. Mm -hmm. We can deliver that information through a smart device that they tap that's specific to them and their case. Mm -hmm. And then on top of all that, we can put them in a more immersive experience in the hospital. So in New York, uh, it's difficult to park, it's difficult to find restaurants. So we can deliver some more generic information about how to navigate through the hospital for all patients and then also be more specific about your particular situation. Okay. On the flip side, we've got the facility. Now the facility is more interested in access and logistics 
and, and delivering good care, right person, right time, right care. Mm -hmm. So what this does is creates a platform for all these disparate systems, whether it be physicians or nurses or administration or whatever, or, mm -hmm. or custodial, can all work together using this device as the central point mm -hmm. to deliver care. Okay. And in terms of the other challenges with the existing product, you talked about comfort, you talked about the fact that they're not particularly clean and hospitals are notorious for being dangerous places to, to go, so it would be good to avoid that. And if you could just get rid of the backless gown, and the, I think <laughs> the combination of the backless gown removal and the, the wrist strap removal could completely transform things. Um, I mean, is there really an issue with, other than the discomfort and the disease, are there any other issues that you're solving? Error associated with misidentification are often because the patient doesn't have it on. And, and the number one culprit for taking off a person's wristband in a hospital is actually the care provider, mm -hmm. the doctor. Uh, because what they'll need to do is deliver some sort of care that requires them to either remove it or, or, or access something that's in the area. And um, my wife is actually a doctor at uh, Columbia. Uh, and she's told me about situations where you could be placing IVs or A lines, which are arterial lines, and you don't know the wristband is there while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But then once you push the gown up or do something, you see that it's there. And it creates a big issue because it took you a long time to put that on. You don't want to take off the wristband because that creates possibility for error in the mm -hmm. future. So there's kind of conflicting forces that are pushing against each other. And in some cases, even extreme cases, there are some, uh, like cardiothoracic surgery, for example, will remove all identification before they go in because they need access to both extremities. Hmm. So there are some extreme cases that are, that are you know, in the picture, and then there's some more broad application. And tell us a bit about the, the company. What, what kind of stage are you? Who are the founders? So I'm one of the founders. Uh, my partner, Dr. Peter Costantino, is the uh, original founder, if you will. Uh, he's the chair of head and neck surgery at Northwell uh, and has a history of, of doing uh, some companies in the past as well. So he's actively involved as the president and the chairman of the board, and uh, I'm the chief operating officer. And uh, where are you in the product development testing cycle? Yeah, so we're, uh, we, we've already deployed it in a recreation setting, uh, in a hospitality setting, quite, quite successfully. Um, and we are doing a uh, IRB, which is an institutional review board trial, clinical trial, mm -hmm. uh, at a hospital system in New York in the coming months. Uh, but we're ready for we're ready for production. We're ready for sale. And I I was thinking about you just in the medical context, but you've just opened up a whole broad set of applications. I mean, this is something that it seems. I mean, can I just wash this off? Is it easy to get off? Or t tell me about. Yeah, so I'll say it depends, okay. right? So, it, it, you know, you, you brought up a good point because it depends on the environment. Right. So in a healthcare setting uh, where you're there for several days, you may be getting sponge baths, you may be uh, iodine, it's the things may be being applied to the area that you want to be able to protect from. Yeah. So you're going to have a stronger adhesion there to make sure that you can last through those things. All right. uh, similarly, in a um, warm weather environment, you're going to want the same thing because you're going to have not the same issues, but similar ones, where mm -hmm. you're gonna have salt water, chlorine, uh, you know, suntan lotion, oils, and things like that. So then, then you can soften things up in an environment where maybe you're just at a day event, mm -hmm. and you don't expect to have any really strong environmental forces affecting what's going on. So it, it can be, when it wants to be removed, you can remove it for, for certain, but once it's removed, it's destroyed. It's no longer functionally capable, uh, either with the, uh, functionally capable or visually red. And is this gonna be used in theme parks? Is that one of the markets that you're thinking of? So we have four verticals. Healthcare we, we talked about. Uh, hospitality is another one. Uh, so in that realm, we're talking about destination hospitality. So, uh, you know, resorts and mm -hmm. cruises, things like that. And then on the recreation side, as the third vertical, we're looking at concerts, events, uh, you know, things where people gather together and it's important to identify. And then uh, the fourth one we're looking at is high security. So think religious pilgrimages, places where people come together, uh, where security is very high, mm -hmm. 
uh, and there, there's a lot of focus on making sure that the right people are there and that the ones that are there we can identify in a very secure way. I mean, there's just nothing worse than being in these water parks and you're like trying to figure out how to keep the dollar bills dry or worried about losing your card. So it seems like there's a lot of opportunity. And obviously Disney had done the magic band mm -hmm. thing, but then you've got the, the band. It seems like this would be a, a lower cost option. And yeah, I mean, if you look at like the, the band or even RFID wristbands, I mean, what, what you're doing there is you're, you're, you're compounding a lot of the issues associated with comfort, mm -hmm. uh, with being discreet and, and being easy to wear and cost, of mm -hmm. course, as you know. Um, and, and really, all you're, you're not gaining much in return, right? We, we can do the vast majority of what you can do with those bands, we can do with this mm -hmm. at a lower cost in a much more discreet way. You mentioned RFID, this is NFC. Do yeah. you see these being manufactured with other chip technologies? Absolutely, as they become available. For us, it's about form factor, right? right. Like, we, we want to make sure that when it goes onto an individual, that it, it's, a, it's a thing, something that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so if the form factor fit, then, then you know, we would take whatever technology fits the application. And when we started talking through Williot and battery-free Bluetooth, and I don't want to kind of get into that because we're pre, pre-product, but, but what about, have, have you looked at RFID and what, what are the pros and cons of having a 800 megahertz UHF kind of uh, RFID chip in there? So, so right off the bat, with, with UHF, you're going to need readers. You're, yeah. you're going to need to set that. That's a, that's a very large infrastructure spend, and that's yeah. actually a lot of the research suggests that that's why adoption has not happened over the last mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years. Um, you're also going to need a battery. You're going to yeah. need to power it in some way. Mm -hmm. um, technology's getting there uh, with printed electronics, and we're, we're, we're getting there with printed batteries, and in, in the future, we may get there. We're not quite there yet. So you've got a large form factor, a large investment on the individual piece and on the infrastructure to make the piece work. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of, of this is that we're the only thing we need is a smart device, which the vast majority of the population already has in their hand. Very good. Anything else that we should cover, do you think, in terms of uh, where you're, what you're doing and, and where you're headed? I, I really love the... Uh, the idea. I think uh, the healthcare market seems like it's really um, a, a great stage to bring this out in because there's a lot of costs and issues that people are looking to optimize. Your hospitality play, I think, especially when you're tracking kids and uh, uh, and so forth and growing up. So, uh, you know, if you can have no click payments where basically you are the payment token. Um, and you can use this to find people in parks and so forth, and that seems like a great opportunity. Yeah, and, and you touched on it. The, what, what's interesting uh, outside of healthcare is that now that we have, if we took like a, a concert, for example, now that we have somebody that's a captive audience, uh, we, we understand a lot about the individual just from the fact that they're there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now we put this device on them and we put them in a, you know, first things first, we need to make it good for the, for the user, right, mm -hmm. for, the, for the patron. So we give them a good experience, we show them, uh, you know, what's going on at the event, logistics, promotions, prizes, and all those things to, to make it interesting and fun. But, but we can also now create revenue generating opportunities because this becomes a new channel, right? This becomes a way the sponsorship can get a captive audience in their hand in a particular place. Mm -hmm. And driving that event to a brick and mortar, driving that event to a sale is something that's very difficult to tie now, but it's something that we can do. Um, so the revenue generating opportunities for merchandise, upgrades, promotions, prizes, all those things is, is a very good opportunity outside of, of the healthcare environment. And then the final piece to that is if you, if you pull in one more thing that you can do on both sides that's very interesting, we haven't talked about it at all, is the analytics. Right? So just by the nature of having this on, we're going to collect some stuff that's not relevant to the individual, but relevant for us learning about where people may be interacting and going, right? just mm -hmm. general flow. So if you have an activation where you're a sponsor and you, you, know, you want people to come in, it's nice to know how many people came in, how long they stayed, you know, things like that. Uh, but then there's also for loyalty programs, for super users, people who want to get more involved, they can then interact and engage in a way that's 
more personal, mm -hmm. so that when they come back to the next event, there, there's more information that's already built in, we mm -hmm. know who they are. And from there, you can start to imagine the things you can do uh, from event to event to, to make the experience better for the individual. Wonderful. Well, I think you've got a lot of great things going for you with this. There's the analytics, there's the user experience, there's the whole operational side. Um, uh, exciting times. Thanks very much for talking with Thank us. Thank you. My pleasure. What three songs would you take on a journey to Mars? Okay, good. I was hoping you'd say Mars and not the moon. So the first one I picked, because uh, it just popped into my head when you asked me, mm -hmm. was Beatles Across the Universe, because they're a great band, and yeah. it just popped into my head. Yeah. Uh, the second one I picked was The Misfits, uh, I Turned Into a Martian, <laughs> which just kind of rocks. Yeah. It's, just, it's a cool song. Um, and the third one I picked has a little more relevance to what we're talking about, which is uh, a, a relatively new band called The Struts. I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, my son and I listen to them a lot. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So there, there's a song uh, that they have said, uh, Could Have Been Me. Yeah. So it just talks about, uh, you know, w wanting to, to get the most that you can out of life and taking a lot of risk and in an entrepreneurial environment, you know, being bold and taking yeah. risk is important. And what, what about the Beatles? Um, does it kind of, do the Beatles conjure up any personal memories for you? Is there kind of like a time when you first heard them? Or? Yeah, so I could tell you an anecdotal story. Right. Um, my mother was actually at uh, what is now City Field, but Shea Stadium, mm -hmm. when the Beatles invaded the United States. Mm -hmm. She was actually there. And I, and I asked her, she, you know, she waited online for you know, days to get tickets. And yeah. then she went to the show and she's telling me all about it. And I'm like, oh, it's super great. And I'm like, how'd they sound? And she goes, oh, I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> it's, just, it's just screaming uncontrollably, everybody there for two hours, and that was it. Well, that was the point, wasn't it? They, yeah. That's actually, your mother was responsible for them no longer touring. That's because right. it was so noisy, they couldn't hear themselves playing. That's they said, right. we're not going to do this anymore. Yeah. So, of that. Yeah. yeah, so it conjures up good memories of my childhood and my parents, and uh, they're just a great rock band and oh. good, good group. Incredible. Very good. Thanks very much. My pleasure.